Hello, my beautiful Taurians. It is B. Welcome to my channel, Psychic Sounds by B. Thank you so much for joining me. This reading is for Taurus Sun, Taurus Moon, Taurus Rising. Also, if you have a Taurus uh, or a Venus or Mars in Taurus in your natal chart, you may want to listen to this reading as it relates to your love life. These are general readings. These may not apply to you, okay? So if uh, you decide, you can listen to your rising sign, your moon sign, your Venus sign, or your Mars sign, maybe to get a little bit more uh, information as it relates to the types of energies that you're dealing with. Uh, the other thing that I would like to say is that I will not be posting any extended readings for purchase on Gumroad uh, this time around. However, it is the Taurus's birthday month, and you guys will be getting your extended reading along with uh, your general reading, okay? So you will get more clarification as it relates to particular energies that you are dealing with in your life. All right, guys, I'm going to do the astrological alignments just a little bit differently here. I'm going to be adding the North Node, the South Node, and the fact that Saturn is going retrograde uh, at the 27 degree mark of Sagittarius uh, at the galactic center. So we will be getting into that as well. Let's go ahead and let's get started, Taurus. Taurus, the sun is in your first house. The sun is illuminating you. Put your best foot forward. Anything and anywhere that you have the spotlight shown on you, you want to make sure that you're being the best Taurus that you can be. So try to make sure that you do things more towards the positive as opposed to the negative. Because if you do anything negative, it will absolutely be illuminated. The sun does not discriminate. If it's negative, it will illuminate it. If it's positive, it will illuminate it. So just be aware of that. So you are going to be in the spotlight. Now, let's talk about the North Nodes and the South Nodes. The North Node is going to move into Leo on the 9th of May. And for you, this is going to be moving into your fourth house. So what does this mean? This basically means that you have um, a need to be a leader, okay, in and have courage with who you are at a core level. Uh, your family, your home, your domicile. You need to lead the pack. You have learned your lessons with dotting your I's and crossing your T's with the North Node going through Virgo. And those lessons that you have learned, you can now incorporate as you move forward with the North Node in Leo. This is where you are to be a leader. This is where you are to be loving, kind, compassionate, big heart, courageous. So this is what you want to do. You want to embrace this area of your life. The south node is moving into Aquarius. And when the south node moves back into Aquarius, what basically happens here, remember, the south node and the north node, they travel in reverse, okay? They don't travel, well, okay, it would be reverse would be this way, and then forward would be this way. <laughs> okay, so... What basically happens here is that it was in Pisces, and now it is moving back into Aquarius. What does this mean when the South Node is in Aquarius? Aquarius is all about detachment, independence, um, uh, being a rebel, doing things differently, okay? Um, thinking outside of the box. When you have the South Node going through Aquarius, you have a need to let go of that independence, let go of that rebellious nature, let go of, you know, all of those things that create alienation around you. What you want to incorporate is making sure that the teamwork, the family unit, the friends, I mean, everything is, is able to be um, celebrated, okay, so if you have been an isolated Taurus, you want to get out there and you want to make sure that you include people in your plans, okay? You want to be a little bit more, how do I want to say this? You know, not that Tauruses are codependent, but you may want to tone down your independence is basically what's going on here. And for you, this is in your 10th house of status and career. So 
in your 10th house of status and career, I'm sorry, is that the 10th house? Yes. 10th house, status, and career. That is correct. So in your 10th house of status and career, so you want to make sure that you are in teamwork with people. You want to make sure that you are including people. You have a, um, an energy around you of inclusion, okay? For some of you Torians, if it hasn't happened already, it may happen in the future, but there could be an Aquarian person that could be jettisoned from your life. Uh, right now with Aquarius um, having the south node in their sign, that means that they are going to be jettisoned. They are going to be isolated from former groups, former friendships. They're going to be kind of kicked out because that's what the south node is. The south node kicks it out. Nobody has any time for it anymore. So the Aquarians are going to go through this massive recalibration of friendship groups and affiliations and networks and team members and family members and how they associate you know, with the people that they love, okay? Because there is this energy that's happening right now where Aquarians are kind of like, they're not going to be tolerated for, uh, if they're not being true to themselves, they're not going to be tolerated. That's kind of how that's going to work out. The same thing happened with Pisceans. Pisceans were jettisoned from some, from some friendships that were absolutely, they thought were going to be there forever. And it turned out that they weren't because they were jettisoned out for whatever reason. So this is all part of um, understanding what it is that, you know, is part of your spiritual path. All right. So in this particular case, you need to have inclusion and you need to not alienate yourself in your status or in your career. This is very important. Mercury is retrograde until May 3rd, and for you, this is in Aries, and it is in the 12th house for you. So with Mercury retrograde here, there is a revisiting or a reassessment of 12th house matters. This could be healing, hospitals, research, psychic abilities. For some of you Torians out there, you are going to be really high on your psychic abilities. Your psychic abilities are going to be on fire Okay, so just be aware of that, all right? And then also, and these could be coming to you in your dream state. These could be coming to you, um, you know, even in your awake state. Like if you're meditating or something like that, you could get a vision. And it's a psychic download. So just take it for what it's worth, all right? But that's what happens when Mercury goes retrograde in your 12th house, all right? So uh, there could be other things here too. Research, you're reassessing research. You're researching something that you need more information on. It's like you can't move forward because you don't have the information you need. Mercury is information. Mercury is communication. When Mercury is retrograde, there is a lack or a misunderstanding or a non-clarified information that's coming to you and you can't really do anything with it. You can't do your research because you don't have all of the information that you need in order to do this. When Mercury goes direct on the third, you are going to start to get information in. You are going to start to be able to move forward. Just take it slowly, Taurus. Make sure you dot your I's and cross those T's, all right? And you also might be getting communication as it relates to 12th house matters. Clandestine affairs. You might hear about a clandestine affair. You might hear, or your clandestine affair could be coming out into the open, especially with the sun in your first house. Uh, you could be hearing about a health uh, matter that gets resolved, or you get communication on a health matter. Like I said, psychic abilities, research, hospitals, unconscious, subconscious, sleep time, those types of things are what happens when Mercury is in this particular area of your chart. Venus is finally direct, and it is in your 12th house of clandestine affairs, research, healing, hospitals, unconscious, subconscious, psychic abilities. With this particular Piscean people, with this particular type of energy, you have got a lot of love, a lot of harmony, a lot of kindness and compassion, not only with that which is hidden, your sleep time, your unconscious, your subconscious, you're coming to terms 
with what you need to do to be loved and to give love. And for some of you, this might have something to do with a Piscean person in your life. All right, so just be aware of that. Mars is direct and it is in your second house. And for you, this is in Gemini. So in Gemini, what happens here is there is a lot of aggression and fire and movement and action and kind of a take no prisoners attitude as it relates to a Geminian person in your life. If you have Gemini aspects in your chart, you could be going, you know, like full force forward, okay? That could be what's happening for some of you Torians out there. So there might be a Gemini around you that's a bit aggressive with you, or they could be quite passionate with you. So please be aware of that Taurus and make accommodations for that. And for you in your second house, this is all about your self-value, the money you make from the company you work for, the money you make from the business you own. You are saying enough is enough. I, I, this is how much time and effort I'm putting into this. I'm not getting paid enough. I'm going to go talk to somebody where I deserve a raise or I deserve a promotion or I deserve to move up in the company or I deserve a new job. Okay, so that could be what's going on for some of you. And when you've got Mars in this particular area of your life, there might be a lot of money going out because when Mars is behind the second house matters, there could be a lot of outflow. Okay, now you're making money and it's good money, but there could also be a lot of outflow for whatever reason. Okay, this is generally what happens when Mars is in your second house. But you're aggressive and passionate about your own value. And that is really important. Just make sure that you stand in your integrity, you're truthful with yourself, and you understand what it is you need to do in order to um, create a positive atmosphere around you as well as around others. The new moon is on May 25th, and for you, this is in your second house of self-value. The money you make from the company you work for, the money you make from the business you own. Set your new moon intentions for what it is you want in these areas of your life, not for what you don't want. Then we have a full moon, um, and this, this you might have a new beginning with a Geminian person in your life as well. The full moon is on May 10th, and for you, this is in your seventh house. This is in Scorpio. So as it relates to the full moon, there might be something coming to completion, ending, or climaxing as it relates to a Scorpio person in your life. It could also have something to do with relationships, business relationships, romantic relationships, equality, partnerships. So this could be something that is culminating, climaxing, or coming to an end. Now the last thing I want to talk about is Saturn retrograde right now at the 27 degree mark in Sagittarius. This is considered the galactic center. So basically what this means is there are long held beliefs or there's something which, you know, that was considered as a fact that is now being questioned, okay? Now, for you, this is in your eighth house of joint finances, of intimacy, okay? So when you, and deep, deep deep-seated, you know, um, issues, okay? Eighth house matters, okay? These are, These are really, like, this is where jealousy resides. This is where passion resides. This is all of that. So when you've got Saturn going retrograde in this particular area of your life, it's basically the galactic center is almost like, you know, it's our Milky Way kind of, the the galactic center is at the center of, you know, like our Milky Way, okay? So, So basically what that is is when Saturn is stationed at that 27 degree mark, which is aligned, or, and or like you could say conjunct, I guess, with the uh, galactic center, there is an internal, there's a going in. Am I doing things right? Why am I not committing? Do I need to commit? What is my truth? You know, excuse me, why am I, some of you might have uh, issues with um, indigestion as, as well, because I seem to be burping a lot. <laughs> So that might be coming up for some of you. You might be having issues with indigestion or something like that. But, um, but as it relates to this eighth house matter, you are reassessing and you are going within to determine what does it mean to be truthful to yourself with joint finances and with, you know, intimacy. 
You know, are you utilizing this appropriately? Are you manipulating it? Are you coercing it? Are you being true to yourself? Are you being true to others? Are you being honest? Are you being faithful? These are things that are going to be coming up for some of you Torians throughout the month of May. All right, guys, let's go ahead and let's get started on your reading. Yours is going to be a long reading because not only am I doing the astrological alignments, I'm also doing your extended reading. But let's get started on the general. Okay, there's your general energies, Taurus. What do we have going on for your work life and financial life, Taurus? Work life and financial life. What do we have going on for your emotional life and love life, Taurus? Emotional life and love life. Emotional life and love life for Taurus. Emotional life and love life. There's your emotional life and love life. And what about health and well-being, Taurus? There's your health and well-being. Okay, so what have we got going on for your uh, Archangel Guidance? Archangel Guidance for Taurus. Archangel Guidance. There's your Archangel Guidance, Taurus. Okay, Taurus, what have we got going on for the general energies for you for the month of May of 2017? Taurus, the energies for you in the month of May of 2017 are the Three of Wands. You are looking at out into the world and you are deciding do I want to move do I want to stay where am I going to go for some of you I just heard you've got three trips that you are going to be taking in the month of May um, that could very well be uh, for others of you you are really right now as far as general energies go you are looking at where you were five months ago and where you are now, or three months ago and where you are now. For some of you, as you can see in this card, this gentleman, look how those clothes just hang on him. So in this particular case, this could be some of you Torians on a, a diet regimen, a workout regimen, and you're losing weight and you're doing a great job. For some of you Torians out there, you may want to, you may consider in May, I got to go out and I got to buy some more clothes because my clothes are no longer fitting me. So that could be what's going on for some of you Torians out there. As it relates to the Three of Wands, this is also an entrepreneurial venture. So some of you Torians out there are considering, what can I do to bring more money into my life? Should I put, should I send out the emails? Should I start contacting headhunters? Should I answer? the headhunters that are contacting me and say, you know what, maybe it is time for me to move on. So that could definitely be what's going on for some of you Torians out there. And for other Torians out there, you might have um, people around you, but there's one in particular that you absolutely love, you absolutely adore them, and you've got another two people behind you, but you just, you kind of like, eh. You know, you're kind of like, whatever, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm friends with them. I go out, I have fun with them, but there's one that I truly do care about. There's one that I truly do love. There's one that I really do want to invest more time in. So this could be what's going on for some of you Torians out there. And for some of you Torians, uh, you might, when you travel, you might be traveling with uh, two other people or three other people. So uh, overall, Really, really beautiful energy, Taurus. Really beautiful energy. So what do we got going on for your work life and financial life? Taurus, for your work life and financial life, you do have the Eight of Pentacles. Taurus, you are dotting your I's. You are crossing your T's. You are working really hard. You want to create perfection. You are going through things in a very methodical manner. It's I, I just see you guys like reading, you know, either contracts, reading negotiations, reading materials, reading manuals, and you're like going through and you're, you're checking the box saying, okay, this was addressed, this was addressed, this was addressed. So that's what happens with the Eight of Pentacles. The Eight of Pentacles is an apprenticeship time kind of card. So basically what this means is that you are really, you've got your head down, your nose is to the grindstone, you're getting stuff done. For a lot of you uh, Torians out there, you might be working on your home, you might be doing um, home renovation. Somebody you know might be doing home renovation. Uh, for others of you, you might be moving to another location and you're deciding, okay, what do I need to do to make this home my castle, so to speak? For others of you, okay, I just heard some of you are repairing a boat for whatever reason. So some of you Torians are repairing a boat or you're going out on a boat and it's like you're, 
you know, you're checking the, the oil and the fuel and making sure that it's all clean and ready to go. So that could be, could even be jet skis or something like that. But there's something that you're, you're doing and you're preparing. You're preparing for something. For other Torians out there, you are looking at your bank account and you're going, I've got to, you know, I've got to put more money in my bank account instead of the money going out. So it's like you're counting your coins, so to speak. It's like you're putting some money aside, like, okay, that's my play money, but this money I'm not going to touch under any circumstances unless it's an absolute emergency. So that could be what's going on for some of you Torians out there, but overall, this is really good energy to sit for an exam. You might be considering an exam, considering a certification, uh, whatever it is you need to do to increase the, the monetary value uh, that, that employers look for in order to give you the boost in your finances that you need. Uh, but this is really, really, really beautiful, beautiful energy. But there could be a lot of housework being done, house repairs, work outdoors, work in the garden, those types of things. Some of you might be building um, a pond in your backyard as well, but overall, really good energies. So what do we have going on as it relates to your emotional life and your love life? For your emotional life and love life, Taurus, you do have the seven of wands. Basically what this means, Taurus, is that you have a higher view of what is going on around you and you are maintaining your ground. So what this could be, this could be, okay, I just heard for some of you Torians out there, if you are about to get up on a ladder in your, at your home, make sure that that ladder is super stable, okay? Super stable. If you have to have somebody down there holding the ladder, whatever it is, just make sure that that ladder is really stable because I'm seeing some instability as it relates to you climbing somewhere, okay? You're climbing up some, it might be climbing up in a corporation as well. So you're trying to maintain your level and you're trying to climb up. But the thing about it is, Taurus, is that you have to fend off all these distractions. So this could be, Taurus, where that Mercury, you know, is, um, is going retrograde for you in your 10th, I think it's your 10th house. Where was it? I'm sorry, your 12th house. Where Mercury is going uh, retrograde in your 12th house of research. Uh, if you do research for work, this could be where it's like, you know what? When you're ready for me to review and analyze what I need to analyze, you can go ahead and send that to me. Do not send me, um, you know, um, half a piece of work. Don't send me incomplete information. Don't send me the stuff that I don't need because it's nothing but a distraction for me. When you're ready, I'll work on it. And when, if you're not ready, don't send it. Okay. So that could be what's going on. As it relates to emotional life and love life, you are maintaining your ground. You are keeping other distractions at bay. For some of you Torians out there, you could have a lot of people that want your attention, whether you are, whether it's same sex or opposite sex, whatever it is, they're giving you a lot of attention. They're, they're distracting you a little bit and you're trying to fend them off because maybe you have your eye on one particular person and these other, you know, six people are just kind of creating a bunch of distraction for you and you can't focus your energy. So that could be what's going on. This could be children. Okay. Maybe you've got date night with your, with your uh, spouse and your children are like, mommy, daddy, I don't want you to go. And you can't go because of this and that and the other. And I just hurt myself and now you can't go and you've got to stay here and you know, doctor me back to health and so on and so forth. And, and you're like, you know what? I got to go. I put this time aside. I know that there is a lot of stuff going on, but if I do not take this time for me and my significant other, I'm going to go nuts. If I don't take time for me and my girlfriend or boyfriend, I'm going to go nuts. Okay. Because you need that time Taurus, because you've had so many distractions up to this point. It's like you need a break. Okay. So this could be you and your significant other uh, basically keeping all of the distractions at bay so you can focus on the relationship and build it stronger, um, you know, a, a better bond. But for those of you that are single, you probably have a lot of suitors right now and you're, 
maybe you just don't want to date or maybe you have your eye on one person and this is why you're trying to keep them at bay all right so what do we have going on as it relates to your health and your well-being for your health and well-being Taurus you do have the seven of Pentacles you got a lot of Pentacles you got two Pentacle cards here and you got two wands cards here so there's a lot of stuff going on with work a lot of stuff going on with your passion and your value and so basically what this is is you are waiting to see the fruits of your labor so for example for those of you that have been on a diet you are finally starting to see the fruits of your labor you're starting to see your clothes get looser so on and so forth you're deciding do I stay on the diet do I modify the diet what do I do you know you're kind of asking these questions you're of two minds as it relates to your health so you might be thinking okay maybe I can maybe if I was on a diet and I was losing weight now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add aerobic activity and lose more weight so that could be what ha what's happening as well as it relates to health for some of you Torians out there this is a waiting period so for some of you not for all of you I'm like two percent three percent you're waiting for a birth so you've got gestation happening right now and you're waiting for this baby you know or babies to come out and you know how am I going to operate in my life and how am I going to modify my life from what it was in the past in order to incorporate these new members that are now part of my life and they're they're my lineage I mean they're my they're my son my daughter whatever how am I going to be able to incorporate that into my life so that could be what's going on for some of you Torians out there and so for some of you Torians out there you are simply waiting you know for this information to come in so you can get something done so it's I feel like you guys are working really hard and you're trying to keep distractions at bay but there's a level of waiting right now before you can you can um, truly harvest what it is that you have been looking forward to and you've got a seven and an eight you get two sevens and an eight so what I'm sensing here is that it might be seven days or eight days away before you start hearing anything back um, or are able to harvest what it is you want to harvest so what do we got going on for your energy or for your uh, Archangel guidance chakra clearing call upon me to clear and open your chakras using sacred geometric shapes this is Archangel Metatron so basically what this means Taurus is that you really need to do your chakra clearing it's very important for you to do that to realign yourself with the energy that you have around you and what will happen when you align your chakras is you're gonna see certain things fall away and you're gonna see certain things stay and then maybe you'll see other things come in because it's part of your soul path but what's going on right now is I'm sensing that this seven of wands these six wands down here they are wands that are distracting you and by doing your chakra clearing you can remove those distractions potentially for some of you so this might be something that you would want to consider just go online and look up chakra activation or chakra clearing chakra balancing you'll find a meditation you know 10 15 minutes um, and then you can just kind of go from there um, but you don't have to put a lot of time in it but you would be really really amazed at how effective a chakra clearing can be to get you back to center okay so you can create whatever it is you want to create in your world so what do we got going on now we're going into the extended clarified reading so what about uh, the general energies what are we going to clarify for the general energies for the three of wands general energies for the three of wands clarifier this is the barbieri tarot there we go and what do we have for the clarifier for your work life and financial life Taurus work life and financial life for Taurus work life and financial life Oop. just fell down work life and financial life work life and financial life there it is and what do we have going on for your emotional life and love life Taurus emotional life and love life 
For some of you Taurians out there, this could also be where you broke up with somebody and they want to get back together with you. And you just don't know if that's something you want to do right now. There is your emotional life and love life. And what is the clarifier for your health and well-being? And these are the crystal ally cards. Health and well-being, Taurus. Okay, Taurus, what do we got going on for the clarifier for your general energies for May of 2017? You have the Knight of Pentacles. You know what? Every time I see this Knight of Pentacles in this particular deck, it's this knight that's like riding a dragon. See that? And it kind of looks like that dragon is everywhere. It's kind of like he bounces on the ground, then he comes back up. He bounces on the ground, it comes back up. So anytime you get the knight of pentacles, and, and I'm definitely getting this because you've got the three of wands, which means travel, you may have a little bit of a bumpy ride. Not a big deal, but the, the pilot for this, this um, either it's, it's in a bus Either it's a pilot in an airplane, you know, in a boat, whatever it is. That pilot is skilled, okay, very skilled. So, you know, what they, what they don't have as far as finesse is concerned, they get to their destination by pure tenacity, all right? So for some of you Torians out there, you might be, re be really tenacious uh, with, w with whatever it is that you, your goal is right now. As it relates to this Three of Wands, entrepreneurial venture, um, maybe a relationship, maybe solidifying a relationship with somebody, travel, um, going over water, uh, losing weight, whatever it is. It's almost like you kind of go through this up and this down and this up and this down, but, but you win, all right? You are in a position right now, Taurus, where your tenacity is going to help you to win, all right? Beautiful, beautiful energy. I don't know why, but the colors blue and red are really coming out right now. And I just got a big hit on that. So it's just popping out. See that blue and that red in there? I mean, it just pops out like, you know, right, you know, in front of me. So I just feel like there's the colors blue and red are going to have great significance for you in May for whatever reason. Um, this could be uh, maybe you're um, buying an article of clothing that has blue and red in it or potentially for some of you where you're traveling blue and red might be you know a, a color you know as far as the national color or something like that but overall really really beautiful energy and you will achieve your goals just through your tenacity so what do we have going on for the clarifier for your work life and financial life? Dionysus. Ecstasy. Oh my. <laughs> Taurus. For some of you Taurians out there, um, you get this strange high off of working. Okay. And, and I, I, I have a, a Venus and a Mars in Taurus. <laughs> uh, go me, right? So um, I, because I have two planets and two personal planets in Taurus, I'm very much like a Taurus. And I love my Tauruses so much. Love you guys to death. All right, because we relate. So in this particular case, you could be saying the busier and the more progress I make, the higher I get. It's like you're on a drug, all right? It's like, I check this off my list, I check this off my list, I check this, and you look up at the clock and it's like two hours past the time that you should have gone home, but you feel so accomplished. It's like it puts you in a, in a state of ecstasy, all right? Okay, the other thing I just got with this Taurus, um, this is not going to apply to all of you, and it may not apply to any of you as it relates to you, but it may relate to, to somebody that you know, the drug ecstasy. So you see this guy, how he's like, you know, got all these coins, they look like little pills, okay? 
So there could be something about pills, prescriptions, something like that, and ecstasy. So, um, or just pills and prescriptions, and then, you know, you get a high off of, you're getting a high off of medication or something. Taurus is, check your medication. If you're on a medication that kind of makes you high, um, you might want to back down on that medication just a little bit. I am not a physician. Please contact your physician and, and ask him or her. But um, there might be something going on with medication that kind of makes you feel kind of like this. All right. For other Taurians out there at work, you are dating somebody at work for a small percentage of you. Uh, this could be um, like you're talking with somebody, like the person that you're dating or the person that you're seeing, you know, you're talking to them about work and it gets you both hot. Like, like it, it, it kind of creates an atmosphere of like progress and, and stability and money and everything else. And the more you talk about it, it's like the hotter you get and you just want to have relations with them. <laughs> so that could be what's going on. So for some of you Torians out there, you are having a relationship with somebody that you work with. And this is a really heightened relationship. Like they take you to greater heights and you take them to greater heights. So that could be what this is as well. Maybe it's not a romantic relationship, but it's a business partnership and you're taking each other to new heights. So that could be what's going on for some of you Torians out there. Other Torians out there, as it relates to work and finances, um, you are in the field of uh, sexual services. So it could be a ladies club, a gentleman's club. It could be, um, you know, maybe you're going to the club and you're, you're at a party and people are taking their shirts off and stuff like that. And maybe it's like an after work party. I don't know where that's coming from guys, but it is coming up. So just kind of be aware of that. Um, for some of you Torians, you could be, um, you could be having sex at work. Um, actually in your building or wherever. Uh, for other Torians out there, this could also be, you might be, you might find out that somebody's drinking at work as well. So please be aware of that. Um, yeah. So that, that could definitely be what's, what's going on here, Taurus. All right, let's go ahead and let's keep going. So what do we got going on for the clarifier for the seven of wands for your emotional life and love life? The temple path. So as it relates to the temple path in your emotional life and love life, for some of you Torians out there, you could be um, visiting a temple uh, in May with somebody that you love or somebody that loves you or love each other. Maybe you're taking a vacation, you're taking that trip and you're going someplace where there's a beautiful temple. Uh, that could be. Uh, also, um, you are, you feel like there's this one person out of all these people that are kind of bugging you and distracting you. You feel like there's this one that you just, you just feel like, I think they're the one I need to put my time and my attention into. You would be right because the temple path is all about spiritual guidance. So what's going on here in your emotional life and love life is that there is some sort of spiritual guidance, your ancestors, your, your spiritual guides, they're guiding you to the right place to meet, you know, your significant other. Like I said, you could be going to a temple. Some of you could be getting married at a temple. Uh, others of you, you could be going to a museum, um, anything like that. Um, it could just be a path. You're walking on a path. Maybe you're out hiking and you know, your significant other bends down on one knee and says, will you marry me on a hiking path with a beautiful, you know, background and beautiful nature and all of that. So that could be what's going on for some of you. Um, some of you might be renewing your vows as well. Uh, some of you might be getting married and you're trying to decide where you want that wedding to be to be and you're getting all of these options from your friends and you're just like stop I don't want to hear it anymore I'm just going to decide 
where I want to go and where I want to be and it's going to be my decision and thank you for the options and thank you for the suggestions, but I will make the decision. Okay, so I, I feel like that is, that is something that could be going on with some of you Taurians. So what is the clarifier for your health and well-being? Cycles. Moonstone. So there are significant cycles that you must pay attention to, Taurus. Specifically, on the 25th, we have a new moon in Gemini. On the 10th, we have a full moon in Scorpio. So there could be something of great significance that happens to you right around these new moon and full moon times. All right. Uh, others of you, as it relates to your health, especially the women, uh, please pay attention to your cycles. Um, make sure because this looks like an egg I mean seriously like right in the middle it looks like a looks like an like an egg like ovaries egg okay and so what I'm sensing for uh, some of you Torians out there you want to make sure you're watching your cycles because if you're trying to get pregnant use the moon cycles um, if you are pregnant it's highly likely you're gonna go in during the full moon guaranteed um, if, if you're going to be delivering in May. Uh, for those of you that um, are looking at cycles as it relates to, you know, maybe your water retention, maybe you retain more water during a full moon and then you release the water at the new moon or vice versa. So you might want to track with cycles. For others of you, cycles could be literal, okay? As it relates to your health and your well-being, you might start bicycling. You might start doing more cycling, Okay, this could be carb cycling as well. Okay, so some of you might be considering carb cycling, more protein, less carbs, and cycling it throughout the week. So that could be what's happening for some of you out there. Um, as it relates to work and finances, uh, also, Taurus, you might want to check what people are doing with your money all right so if you have employees and like maybe they're going out and they're having dinner or whatever and you know you you find these charges on the credit you might want to check the credit card to make sure that you don't have uh employees that are going to strip clubs or going to gentlemen's clubs or or um you know uh ladies clubs or something like that because it's not part of the job <laughs> So that could be what's going on for some of you Taurians out there. Um, but yeah, overall, Taurus, it, it's not a, a massively exciting reading. Um, it's not a massively dull reading, and it's not a bad reading at all. It is just basically kind of telling you um, kind of what you're dealing with as well as what some of the things that you can kind of expect as you move through the month of May. But I would say the most important thing for you to do, Taurus, is definitely do that chakra clearing. So if there are anything, or if there is anything negative that is brewing, you get rid of that right away. So do your chakra clearing before May 1st so that your May will be, um, will be clear, okay? And um, for others of you, if you're having a great life, Okay, which I'm sensing that you guys are really having a, a good life. I mean, it's really solid and stable, which is what you like. Um, to enhance that wonderful environment, also do the chakra clearing. Because then you can, you can bring more positive in and get rid of any little, you know, um, uh, minuscule details, you know, that, that, or distractions that are bothering you. All right, Taurus? Okay, Taurus, I hope you like this reading. It's a long reading. Sorry, but you guys did get your extended reading, and I promised that your birthday reading was going to have the extended reading for free. All right. Love you guys. Take care of yourselves. If you are traveling, safe travels. I wish you the best. Happy birthday. Much light, much love, and many blessings. Namaste.